All right, folks, uh, can everyone hear me okay? Panelists, can you hear me? Sure can. Yeah, sure can. Awesome, well, we're gonna go ahead and get this event started um, as people trickle in. Uh, happy Wednesday, everyone. Uh, I wanna thank everyone for attending our inaugural Line of Business Spotlight Series panel uh, and for taking the time to learn more about the unique opportunities available to you as Aramark alumni. Uh, my name is Josh Martin. I'm the Talent Marketing Manager at Aramark, and I have the honor and privilege of being your moderator for today's panel. Uh, now, some of you as alumni are likely aware that Aramark provides services in a wide range of operating environments from public schools and colleges to uh, national parks and baseball stadiums, but today we're going to get an inside look at one of our most unique and rewarding lines of business, uh, and that's corrections. Now, over the next hour or so, you'll hear from some of the most passionate and accomplished folks working in our corrections line of business who are uh, not only going to tell you about the countless career opportunities uh, and the positive impact you can have, but they'll also answer some of your most burning questions like, uh, what are the hours like working in a prison or how Aramark ensures the safety of their employees in a corrections setting. Uh, and don't worry if we miss anything you're curious about, we'll be holding a brief question and answer session at the end of the panel as well. Uh, our hope is that through an inside look into this uniquely rewarding line of business, uh, you'll start to picture yourself building a career in corrections as well, uh, being a part of the incredible work that's going on in this space. Um, great, so to get the show on the road, um, I know for a lot of folks, even those familiar with Aramark, the idea of working in a correctional facility may never have crossed your mind. <laughs> so. Uh, to introduce yourselves and uh, get this conversation started, I'm going to ask that each of our panelists uh, tell us who you are and tell us about how you got started in the corrections space in the first place. Uh, so Stacy, let's go ahead and start with you. Sure. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. Uh, my name is Stacey Langen. I am the RVP for the East Region of Corrections. In terms of how I got started, you know, I've been at, uh, in Aramark for about 13 years now. And, and frankly, I've moved from different roles to other roles, uh, started the enterprise and then moved into the business units, was with refreshments, was with K-12, um, and, and came to a point where there was a role that was open in corrections. And it was interesting, I interviewed with HR around that role and with town acquisition. And I can remember coming to that final meeting and they put two job descriptions in front of me side by side. And one of them was the VP of marketing for sports and one of them was the VP of marketing for corrections at the time. And it was pretty funny because for me, I, I looked at the, the HR VP at the time and Abigail, I still remember, and I said, oh, you know, no brainer, I'm, I'm going corrections. <laughs> and she stopped and she said, I I'm sorry, excuse me? <laughs> and I said, no, I'm definitely, I'm all in on the corrections piece. And I think she was a little surprised because certainly I think we think of VP marketing sports, how much fun is that? Uh, but, but candidly for me, from a corrections perspective, I looked at it as this is a space I know nothing about. Um, I had never been in a correctional facility before other than a, a brief tour as a 17 year old in my psych class in high school. And so the thought of learning an entirely new business was certainly intriguing to me. And I think also looking at all of the amazing things that the corrections business does to to frankly drive Aramark's mission around let's get these folks out, let's get them on their feet, let's get them leading productive lives, let's service them in a ballpark or a school. That was really intriguing to me. Um, and so I did that job for a few years and now I came onto the ops side and it's, it's my favorite line of business, frankly, you know, thus far that I've been a part of. Awesome. Cool. So Stephen, how about uh, we go to you next? Well, uh, in my time with Aramark, I spent 12 years in three other lines of businesses between higher education, leisure, and sports. Um, so I got a call one day about the opportunity to enter corrections, and you know, I wasn't ever looking to go into that business with a passion around hospitality and food service, culinary. Uh, but I took a tour with the HR director of a facility. I ended up on a sheriff's tour, toured the whole facility. 
I said, wow. I said, this kitchen is extremely clean, extremely organized. I said, and meeting the sheriff and spending, you know, an hour and a half with her. I said, this is a client I could definitely deal with. I said, this client wants very, you know, low drama. Here are the expectations. Everything's black and white. Um, it was it was the type of client I wanted to work with. And so, uh, and then ended up entering corrections. I've spent a little over three and a half years now as a district manager of Pennsylvania, Maryland, Virginia, D.A. Um, and I love it. Our clients are great to deal with. Uh, every single one, great expectations. Our contracts are well written. Um, and just a great, great people to work with. And our, our team's phenomenal. The support's there. Um, and just great clients, which I love it. We're spending time when other lines of businesses. Awesome. Great. Low drama clients go a long way. Um, yes. <laughs> cool. Well, Anoop, how about you? What's your story? Oh, you're muted, Anoop. There we go. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to our uh, spotlight. And uh, I, I started uh, uh, with uh, Aramark about a year and a half ago. And, uh, uh, and now I'm an operations manager and uh, a district manager, bench district manager. Um, it all started for me in 2014 when a recruiter reached out to me. And, um, and, and they said they have a uh, higher DRC corrections being opened up and uh, you'd be a great candidate for it. And honestly, I didn't even know what corrections was back then. And, and they explained a little bit about it. And in my immediate answer in fear was no, uh, there's no way I could go to prison and work with prisoners. And my mind started going crazy. But as time passed, I always had that back of my mind. It's like, I gave up something. And later on, I started correlating everything to the people that are working around me. I said, they're just like anybody else. And we just have to manage them. And we manage them on a regular basis now as it is in our fast food restaurants. So five years later, uh, my contract ended. Um, and I applied for a district manager. I myself applied for it. Nobody recruited me. And position in corrections. And I went through the hiring process, went through, visited all the places. Um, just like Steven said, the kitchen was cleaner, cleaner than any restaurants out there. Uh, people seem to be genuinely happier and I felt really comfortable. And, uh, and I went through the whole process and, and I think uh, Stacy actually found a DM internally and uh, Bob and Stacy still found a spot for me in their roster. Um, and until uh, a DM position comes available, they said, we'll, we'll find a way to put you in. And uh, a year and a half later, I'm enjoying working uh, with the team. And uh, as an operations manager or any role they put me in, um, as challenging as what's awesome, um, every day is, is exciting. And uh, I look forward to working every day and, and never looking back. And it's the best, best thing I ever did. Awesome. Love to hear it. And uh, our fourth panelist, Chris, let's hear from you. Hi, hello, I'm Chris Kramer. So I got involved with corrections and actually Aaron Michael had been in corrections. So I was a hotel banquet manager out in Boston and my previous employer from college actually when I moved to Boston ended up going to Aramark and working in corrections. Uh, and he was looking for an assistant director. So uh, reached out to me to see if I wanted to move back home, which I actually it was oddly enough looking to at the time so I uh, interviewed made the move back home I was an assistant um, and then I was a food service director now I'm a general manager in northeast Ohio um, again just like everyone else it wasn't exactly what I thought I'd be going into with corrections especially working in hotels um, it was a big <laughs> it was a big jump it was a jump I was glad I made and ever more so glad now with the growth in the company so that's awesome. This is all great to hear because, you know, I think generally uh, you don't assume that people always grow up having a dream of working in corrections, but obviously there's tons of opportunity. And so I, I love, I love to hear it. Um, awesome. So to really uh, get our conversation started here, uh, I kind of wanted to ask the elephant in the room question, so to speak, and get it out in the open. And that question is, do you feel safe working in corrections? Um, Stacy, I wanted to toss this to question to you first. What are your thoughts on that? Sure. Um, you know, I think my first visit into a correctional facility, actually, um, it's one of Stevens accounts now, it was Chester County, PA, probably about six or seven years ago. 
And I remember walking into the facility and there was a contract monitor for the client there who had a walkie talkie on his belt. And I remember walking, looking around and there was a, a, a number of inmates working in the kitchen because in about probably 80% of our kitchens, that's what we have as additional inmate labor. And, and saying to him, okay, so wait, if something goes down in here, that's what we've got. We've got a walkie talkie to work with. And it's funny because he looked at me, he said, it, it's going to be just fine, right? It was my first visit. And that's when I started to learn about the dynamic of the location and realized that, you know, those folks, they, that's a, that's a coveted job to work in the kitchen. They're not going to do anything to, to, to mess with that. Um, and, you know, I think in any location you need to be, right, whether it's a corrections location, a sports environment with a rowdy crowd, or in a higher ed environment with a student event, you have to be aware of your surroundings. I think that's no different in this environment. But I can honestly say I've been in corrections now about seven years, not by accident, right? I've had other opportunities pop up candidly and I haven't wanted to leave. I've never felt unsafe, you know, at any point in a facility. Um, so, um, you know, I, I feel good about it. Awesome. And uh, Stephen, I wanted to pass this to you too. Can you provide any further insight into the safety, security situation going on in uh, corrections? Yeah, I would say uh, most of our facilities, there's deputies or officers, they're there to assist, right? Um, we're not there as law enforcement, but we're there to put out meals. Uh, Stacy had mentioned the inmates who are in the kitchen are the ones who are cleared and allowed to do it. And they love being in the kitchen because there's some additional benefits of being allowed to be in the kitchen. So um, they listen to you. You need something scrubbed, clean, whatever, they listen to you. Uh, I've never personally seen any fights in the kitchen. Um, I've never seen any issues. I've never been disrespected by any inmates because um, they don't, they don't want to lose that privilege, right? They get, to get out, to get be in the kitchen, there's additional food there. Um, at the same time, right, like a lot of most of my facilities, I'm not allowed a cell phone, so I'm engaged 100% with my team the whole time I'm there. Um, so, you know, safety and security at the same time you're in, you're in a facility, but at the same time, I've never had any issues, so. I mean, when you think about it, that's their primary goal, right? Their primary mission as a, as a corrections client is safety and security. That's their top priority over everything else. Um, and that and that shows, and I, I certainly feel that when I'm on site. Well, thank you, Stacy, and uh, thanks, Stephen. Uh, that's yeah, that's eye opening, um, and definitely reassuring to know how thoughtful and careful this group and the clients we work with are when it comes to safety and security. Um, so appreciate that. Uh, so besides all that, um, I'd love to hear in a general sense, uh, how would you describe? the day-to-day, -day, the working in corrections? Like, what's a day in the life for you? Um, Chris, let's start with you on this one. Yeah, so again, like I said, coming from hotels, uh, hotels never close 24-7, especially working in events, you could be there all day, all night. So coming to corrections, that was definitely something that was a big draw to me was because it is a very predictable schedule. While, of course, jails and prisons, they, they never close, but the kitchen certainly does. Um, so you, you have a start time and end time. It doesn't change very often um, and it stays pretty, pretty rigid and predictable. So in terms of having a family or a young child, such as I do, I have a two-year-old daughter, it's great for me to be able to have that certainty in terms of what I'm going to be able to be at and be around for her too. So that's always been something that's been very, very good for me to have. So Awesome. Um, and then in terms of um, what we do with the food, um, we definitely take a lot of pride in terms of what kind of food that we serve throughout the day. Uh, and we make sure that we offer as many initiatives as we, as we can and as are possible. So we've even gone as far as we have an executive chef that just works for the corrections line of business to help create new recipes and innovations that we can offer our clients with our menus, as well as our uh, very large team of dietitians that help support us operationally day in and day out. Any questions we have um, they're able to help to, to move us along with that. Awesome. And uh, Stacey, I know you've been in the game for a while. Um, anything that you would add? You're on mute. Myself off mute here. You know, I think that there's, you know, I think there's this misconception by people that it's bread and water and there's not really a culinary angle to it. And at the end of the day, corrections is very much a hospitality business. 
I mean, inmate satisfaction is a real thing. Staff retention of our clients and staff morale, just like in our businesses, it, it, you know, the cafeterias that we serve, it's a real thing. And, and hospitality, menu quality, nutrition are, are very real and frankly are moving more and more to the forefront of this business. So um, it's a big piece of the puzzle for us to, to Chris's point, we invested in an executive chef. We do a lot of work around recipe innovation on both the inmate sort of traditional tray feeding side and then other retail programs that we do. Um, so I think it's, it's easy to look at corrections and write that piece off or not think about it, but it's, it's very much a hospitality business. Great. Great. Thank you, Stacey. Um, cool. So moving on, uh, this next question um, is for those wondering if they should apply for a job or not. Uh, and as leaders in the correction space, I was wondering if you could tell us what it is you look for in candidates and what would set our alumni on the call up for success while working in corrections. Uh, Anoop, I'd love to start with you on this one. Yes, Just. Uh, yeah, I think... Uh... Pretty much any experience that you can bring would be fantastic. Anybody who can share the values um, that we share, our so common goals, uh, have a great attitude, um, enjoy and, and works hard, uh, can succeed in this. Uh, there's tremendous opportunities. Um, the employee, employment and corrections is very stable. Uh, there's room for growth. Uh, one can uh, definitely make a career out of this. And this is potentially a company where you could retire with. And that's what I looked at also. It's a long-term stable uh, company and uh, I'm enjoying every bit of it. Awesome. And Steven, as somebody who's on the hiring end, um, would you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I think when I entered corrections, I didn't know what they encompassed, right? You have, you, we have our mission, we have our vision. Um, there's a lot of programs that we can do and every client as much as they're the same, they're so different and unique with what they ask from us that we have the ability to drive needs and of our clients to any way we uh, need to, right? We have retail programs, we can do facilities, we can do laundry for them. Um, so the more and more clients ask, the more we do. So if you have a mission and a vision, you want to drive the business to actually see sustainable growth, not only in the business itself, but your career, um, it, it, there are the sky's the limit because there are so many, right? There's only, you know, so many stadiums in the world, but corrections facilities, there's thousands of them, right? So our business is a pipeline for growth. Uh, we have great people, be a good person with some, with energy and vision and want to do a good job and take care of the people because we're in the people business. Uh, the growth is tremendous for the company and for yourself personally. Well, and think about it, right? The reality is, is that because it's a business that there's a number of people that say that make a decision about it, right? Like Anoop did in 2014, right? Anoop, you were, you were reluctant and for good reason. I understand that you didn't know, but there's a lot of people that are reticent to jump in. So for those who are willing to jump in, let's face it, that pool of talent, if you're a strong talent, your ability to really continue to grow and skyrocket and move up it is real, right? And I think the three guys on this call you know, Steven, Chris, and, and Anoop are all examples of that, where they're all great talents um, with great, you know, appetites to learn, e eagerness to perform, okay with accountability. Um, and so their careers just continue to blossom in this business and probably move, let's face it, probably frankly move at a clip faster than maybe another business where you have thousands of people that are glomming to get into that business. Um, so that I think is also something about corrections that can be really, frankly, wonderful from a career growth perspective. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think I ever quite thought about it like that, but that's definitely true. Awesome. Well, uh, I want to pivot a little bit here for our uh, next question. You know, every industry, especially ours, but you know, not just the correction space, has had to reimagine our operations in response to COVID-19. Um, so for this question, I just wanted to ask if you guys could give us some insight into how Aramark has responded to COVID and what the future of our operations and corrections are going to look like post-COVID. Uh, Inu, I'd like to put this one to you as well. Sure, I'll, I'll take that one um, because I was very much involved and in, we all are in mm -hmm. a way. Um, I, I felt totally, I've totally felt comfortable, uh, felt safe during the COVID era. 
Uh, I still think we're towards the end of it, but I felt very safe during the era. In fact, I feel more safer in the prisons than, than in the public, to be honest with you, because we have con workers continuously uh, cleaning and sanitizing all the touch surfaces, high touch surfaces like rails and doorknobs and whatever the, you know, uh, that we'd be touching on a regular basis. It's, it's constantly uh, sanitized. Uh, we feel, uh, we follow all CDC guidelines. Um, we're, we're tested weekly um, for COVID. Uh, we also provide, actually not we, they provide free vaccines. Uh, and, and that's a big plus. And, and they call us a frontline workers almost, and which we are in a way. And, and I took advantage of that. And uh, that will help me keep myself and my family safe. So uh, it was a lot of plus. And uh, uh, the COVID era, yeah, it was, it was challenging. But we took a lot of steps to keep our people safe. And uh, I felt very comfortable with it. Awesome. Yeah, I've actually been hearing that uh, across our business, whether it's healthcare, or sports and entertainment, we're very, very serious about the safety. So um, that doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, Chris, I want to put the same question to you. Yeah, uh, really what we, what great thing we found out is that corrections is not only re recession proof, it's also pandemic proof as we've come to find, uh, which has been great. And what I really loved about the experience and I, it's weird to say that about such a terrible time, but we really got to be proactive with our clients and to be right there for them, providing such an important thing. I mean, besides keeping their res their residents and offenders safe and secure, they needed to get them fed during this time where it was hard to be doing that in a lot of ways. And so we got to be proactive with them and come up with creative solutions to, in some facilities completely change and do a 180 in terms of how we were going about our day-to-day -day operations, um, but being on the forefront of that and being proactive instead of reactive and really helping them out with that. And on more occasion than one, being in meetings towards the end of this time, again, as Anoop was saying, hopefully it's the end, um, but them just saying that really us in food service were a lot of times the only area where they didn't run into issues. Uh, because we were able to provide those things for them. So it was, it's actually been a great experience over the last year and a half in a lot of ways. Yeah, I'm going to shamelessly brag, if you don't mind, Josh, a little bit, do sure. a little bit of bragging about this team, uh, the performance of this team in COVID, given crazy challenge, right? Unprecedented challenge in, in what is perceived as a challenging environment as it is. It was just incredible the way that this team pulled together. And I think it's something that speaks to the culture of this business. One of the things I love about this business is our people. And maybe that sounds trite, but it, it's true. I mean, the, the sure, like the, the pure grit of the team and the collaboration and teamwork is just second to none in terms of my career. So I've been at Airmark 13 years and I was at other companies for 13 years before that. I'm dating myself here, but you know, 13 years before that, and just the way that this team came together to ensure that everyone was safe, but that service went on seamlessly was just, it was really humbling. Um, you know, everyone rolled up their sleeves to, to dive in and help. And I think one of the, the benefits of that is that because of the, us supporting our clients, to Chris's point about food service was one of those functions for them that they didn't have to worry about during that time because we made sure it happened. Um, this business is poised for explosive growth. Um, we have really captured a lot of new business coming out of the pandemic because that word of mouth traveled about that performance. So it's an exciting time for the business. Stacy and Josh, I want to piggyback on that real quick. I mean, we did such a phenomenal job in the DRC. Uh, we just uh, signed a 10-year contract. And so we're very stable for next 10 years in the state of Ohio. So uh, anyway, I just wanted to you know, talk about yeah, how well we exciting. did. And that's one of the reasons why they approved us for another 10 years. So. Yeah. Absolutely right, Anoop. It's exciting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really, especially after the year everybody just went through, that's really assuring to hear about the, uh, the stability uh, and the growth. Because stability without growth can be a little dry, but uh, this sounds a little more exciting than that. So thank you. Um, Absolutely. Cool. So. Uh, one of our last questions before we go to the Q&A, um, of course, everybody on this panel uh, was selected in part because of the long and successful careers you've had in this space. Uh, but for the last question specifically, I was hoping to hear about what experience most was most impactful to you as you developed through Aramark. 
I don't want to hear from everybody on, on what your, your most impactful experience was. So let's start uh, with you, Chris. Yeah, so for me, it was really especially coming again um, from outside and coming from the hotel world and being in events is that that is very compartmentalized and you don't get to touch other pieces of it besides what you're actually doing. So I could run an event like no other, but I didn't do much with hiring or the food ordering, menu planning and things like that. So but with corrections, you really are, especially once you're in those management roles, you are touching all lines of that and you are essentially running your own business. Um, but in addition to that, also being able to, even in corrections, being able to be involved with retail programs and um, staff dining within ODRs and being able to, again, I keep using the word innovation, but it truly is such an innovative line of business and the sky's the limit in terms of what we can do and what we can offer our clients and being able to make each contract better by having those opportunities and presenting to our clients and making it work, so. Awesome, yeah, I guess that's a part of where that growth comes in is being able to experience different sides of the business, uh, see where you fit the best, that's really cool. Uh, and Noob, how about you? Yes, sir, uh, one of the things that I loved during the restaurant days was interacting with customers. Uh, I just enjoy going out there and talking to them and asking how their food was and, and just, interaction. I really like that. And, and I was able to carry that same passion, I guess, to Aramark Corrections. Um, I enjoy building relationship with our clients. Um, I enjoy talking to them about the great things that we accomplished and, and also the challenging tasks that they, we face uh, and, and whatever it may be, just communicating with them. I enjoy coming up with solutions to a difficult situations. Uh, it's even better when the client gets involved and, and together we come up with some kind of actionable um, solutions. That's even better. So uh, that part I enjoy uh, a lot. And that's one of the things I can continue on from what I did in the past. Awesome. Yeah, I'd love to hear it. Steven, how about you? So one of the most impactful things for me in corrections is really like the growth of my district. It started pretty small. Um, we've retained and grown our business, taken over new large clients. Um, and then like, people have stayed at their accounts because they've been happy there. We've implemented commissary and vending and retail programs like Fresh Favorites and I Care Fresh. Um, so no matter where you are, you can grow your business. You implement a program, you can grow your business at the location, right? You would think corrections is hard to grow. And then by having good people, we've seen, you know, all these clients, they know each other. They, a lot of the counties, they talk, a lot of the sheriffs, the Department of Corrections, they talk. And just watching my team grow from people being assistant directors, the food service directors, now general managers, um, growing the business and watching our teams grow. Um, into real leaders who are owning the business and watching their own business grow now. Um, it's just extremely rewarding. And it's been impactful to my own career, to Aramark, and just all the people that work for me. Um, it's, it's, it's really heartwarming. Now, I know it sounds crazy, but um, to watch people's career grow within corrections is it's tremendous. Awesome. Love to hear that, too. Uh, and Stacy, how about you? Um, so I guess before I jump into one particular incident, I guess there's a couple things I would share that maybe I feel like we hit on or, or didn't hit on or, but, um, you know, one of the things I love about the corrections business is I feel like it's the underdog business in the portfolio, right? It's the business that everyone talks about higher ed or business dining or healthcare, or, right? Everyone talks about the sports, of course, right? Everyone talks about those businesses, but What's really interesting, if you look at the portfolio of Aramark and what are the businesses that are poised for the most growth, and frankly, what are the businesses that are driving the most profit, it's corrections. And, and you know, I always advise people, and this is before I even came into the corrections business at Aramark, if you're looking for career opportunity and career growth, you want to go to the businesses that are driving profit and that are, are poised for growth. Right? So they're going to give you the best opportunity for career advancement and growth. And so I just throw that out there because I think that's very much what the corrections business is. And it's certainly I'm intrigued by that underdog nature of it, that people sometimes dismiss it. Um, and, and maybe I did too. I don't know. I think I was more curious about it. But, you know, and then you get in and you realize, oh, my gosh, the, the innovation that goes on, the lonely, amazing things. 
I think the low drama piece of the client part is I know huge for me, certainly as an RVP of the region, I spend my time traveling almost every week in accounts, meeting with our teams to support our teams, meet the clients. And for me, there is something incredibly refreshing about clients who mean what they say and say what they mean, right? I don't, I don't like passive aggressive. I don't like, oh no, everything's great. And then meanwhile, something's on fire. I like people who are genuine and real. And I feel that way about our team. And I find the clients, frankly, are the same way. And there's just, there's no drama. And I've been in other businesses where there's a high level of sort of drama that gets in the way of the actual goal and, and, and not necessarily here, but other companies, right? And so this is a business that I feel like is void of drama. Um, I, I think at the end of the day, if I, if I think there's been a number of things for me and corrections over the years that I'm you know, either extremely proud of or humbled by or just excited about. But I, one recently actually was in Stevens District. I visited with Stephen at Fairfax County probably, oh gosh, I don't know, Stephen, four weeks ago, six weeks ago, I don't know in that time frame. And they were, um, they're under a kitchen renovation. They're doing an into work class. For those who are, are familiar with corrections, into work is our vocational program where we teach offenders in a class kitchen skills, right? We help get them on their feet. We provide scholarship and job placement assistance upon release. It's, it's really pretty amazing. Frankly, it's one of the things that keeps me and draws me into this business, that, that mission um, that, we, that we serve. It's, um, it's, it's pretty incredible. I'm, I'm just so proud of that piece of it. And I was at Fairfax County and we were touring and there was a gentleman there um, who, was, who was an offender, who is you know, obviously incarcerated, but working in the kitchen, working in the staff dining. And I was touring and I got a chance to speak to him, which, you know, we speak to the offenders. And I, he asked me if I was hungry and I wasn't. And then he asked me again later, like 15 minutes after that night, I realized that it was really important to him to cook for me, right? It was a sense of pride for him to be able to cook. And so I said, sure, you know what? I actually, I'm hungry. I would love some lunch. And he asked me what I would like. And I told him to, his name was Kenneth. I won't give his full name for privacy reasons, but I said, you know what, Kenneth, why don't you surprise me? And so I just let him, let him go, right? You surprise me. And the pride with which he brought me this plate of food, which was this amazing brown seasoned rice, a beautiful piece of grilled salmon and garlic roasted broccoli, that it was probably one of the best meals I've had in a long time. And the pride with which he brought it, to me, um, it may, it reinforced me why we do what we do. And, and at that moment, it's, I, I realized, you know, it's a good, was a good reminder of, you know, this is why I'm here. This is why we do what we do. Um, it's for guys like that who now, when he leaves that facility, we can help him get stood up with job placement, potentially hire him at another Aramark facility, help him get on his feet to support his family. Um, you know, it's the moments like that, that I think really drive it home for me. Uh, and seeing how that resonates, frankly, with the broader team, that's what, you know, that's what keeps me in corrections. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a kind of story I feel like you don't really see uh, across the other lines of business. Um, yeah. So that's really powerful stuff. Well, thanks for sharing that, Stacey. Um, awesome. Well, for the remainder of the webinar, I'd love to open up the floor to our attendees uh, for any questions at all uh, for our panelists about what it's like working corrections, uh, how to get started, whether you're qualified, and anything in between. So go ahead and drop any of your questions in the Q&A or in the chat, uh, and we'll get them answered for you. And I'll just throw out there why you guys might be typing or thinking about it. No questions really off the table, right? I mean, if you heard the questions I get asked at my family's holiday parties about my job and my day to day, trust me, <laughs> no question is off the table. Well, while everyone's thinking, I actually had a, one question um, that kind of relates to an earlier question we had, and that's who's qualified or who should apply. Um, from what I understand, uh, it's not necessarily about years of experience in corrections, but rather the enthusiasm and willingness to, to be a team player. So 
when folks do come on board, are there training opportunities or what kind of growth opportunities for folks who maybe don't have as extensive of a background? Yeah, so I'll, I'll start and then Stephen, maybe I'll pitch it to you if that's okay. So in terms of opportunities, right, we have everything from hourly roles to food service directors to general managers who oversee a portfolio of business that might be, you know, eight, maybe six to 10 sites and $5 million worth of business to district manager roles that might manage a $20 million portfolio of business. So there's a ton of opportunity in that business. Frankly, like any industry, we have a lot of great openings available for folks, but I think that's across the board right with any industry um, right now. In terms of what they look for, I mean, hey, I came in, I didn't know anything about corrections at all, nothing. But I was eager to learn about it. I asked a ton of questions. I was comfortable in the environment. And I think because of that, um, that eagerness and, and that willing to roll my sleeves up and jump in, for me, you know, I've just seen my career grow in this business. So I think for anyone who's willing to try something different, ask a lot of questions and learn, it's an amazing opportunity. Steven, your thoughts? I mean, I know you've grown your team immensely. Yeah, and I think just people in general, right? We have our commissary business where some people are retail focused and we have food service and, you know, all our support, our dietitians, our marketing, our uh, NAS support. I mean, we have so much support and onboarding people. We have a very robust onboarding um, from hourly to management now um, where you're going to be set up for success. The food at this account is very similar processes. It's a different account, maybe a different menu, but our processes, our systems are all very similar. Um, so it, you can transfer pretty easily. You can you can go from a small account, which I have some that had 34 inmates, and then I have some that had 1,700 inmates. Um, and guess what? The process is the same. You switch it from 34 inmates on your menu to 1,800, and it's like, oh, this is what you need to order. Okay, let me let me go from there. So. We have great systems, great processes, um, and it makes people very successful. Awesome. Cool, I see another question here from Lisa. Uh, where do I apply? Why don't you ask? We just launched our brand new careers website last week, um, and that's careers.aramark.com. Uh, if you go there, there's a search function where you can put in where you live or what kind of role you're working for and hit corrections and you can find all of our openings uh, you could also go to the Where We Work tab on our website. That'll show you an inside look and an in-depth look into corrections, the kinds of work we do, the programs we run. Uh, and you can also check out our blog where we have stories uh, much like the stories you've heard today uh, that can show you some, some folks and their personal experiences. So I definitely recommend checking out the site. Well, and I'll also throw out there, Josh, if you don't mind, right? In mm -hmm. terms of you know, reaching out or getting hooked up with opportunities, as I think at the end of this, we're going to be sending out some info, follow up information with all of our contact information. So feel free to reach out to us directly and we can tell you what's in your area, what type of opportunities are open right now, um, and, and have some deeper dialogue one on one about, you know, those potential opportunities in the business. Mm -hmm. And everyone on the call and who's registered will we'll be reaching out to you personally after the, the call to see how you liked it and to see if there's any opportunities that uh, work for you. Cool, we have a, one from John. Where is the nearest correctional facility to Delaware? Does anyone know that? Oh, I'll Steven. That. So uh, <laughs> we have a lot of facilities on the Eastern Shore of Maryland, which just borders um, Delaware. We certainly have opportunities over there. Uh, and so most of Maryland, Pennsylvania, and then Southern Jersey. So uh, Delaware is unique. They, they do their own facilities, but we have everything surrounding there. Right, so Cecil County in Maryland is very close. Harford County, Maryland is very close. Chester County, PA is very close to Delaware. I only know that because I live in that general area. So I can get to, the, I live about a mile out of Delaware so I can get to all those facilities very quickly. But there's a number in that general vicinity. Yeah, the Eastern Shore, Salisbury, which is Wicomico County, Cambridge, Dorchester County, Queen Anne's County. Um, so there's a few on, a bunch on the Eastern Shore. Nice, pretty close by. Awesome. Uh, we have another question from Jessica, uh, and this is for Stacy. She asks, do you prefer working in a field support role or in an operations role better? Oh, wow, that's a great question. Um, 
So I had been in operations prior to coming to Aramark. Then when I came to Aramark, I went into more field support. So I was at enterprise marketing and then in field support roles in K-12 refreshments, corrections, and then came back to ops. I think uh, they both added, have added that value to my career, candidly. I think um, it's nice to have the balance of the two. The reason I came back to operations was because I missed the accountability of it and the ownership of it when I was in a field support role. And again, those roles, support, those roles are incredibly valuable. I'm not discounting anything that field support does. I, I lived it for years. Um, but when I was in that role, for me, I missed the, hey, I, you know, I find myself asking, does this matter? And how much change can I truly impact? And to Stephen's point about growing a team and helping people build their careers, which is important to me, I miss that piece. So I'm very, very happy to be back on the operations side. Um, the corrections business is one and where the operations folks have a lot of input and say into the overall business unit strategy, which is really nice. So I get sort of my fix, <laughs> you know, for a better word, like I, I get my fix relative to that. Um, but I am really enjoying ops. Um, operations right now, for sure. Awesome. Great. We have another question here. Um, what is the percentage of food versus facilities roles uh, in the overall line of business? Yeah, so I'll, I'll jump in and take this one just because, again, having the region, I see the larger perspective. Mm -hmm. I would say 99% of it is food. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that. Let's put it this way. So corrections is around a $600 million piece of business, you know, a, a business unit in the enterprise. I would say about 20% of that or 25% of that is retail business. And I would say 74% is, or 73% is food. And then we have a handful of facilities and laundry type of accounts out there. That is a growing portion of the business. We're seeing more and more people look to us for those types of services. And Maxime and I had a capabilities meeting with an existing food client on Monday. And that was a big piece of that conversation. Um, but just, it, it's mostly again, food and retail services and retail services and corrections. Cause I'll just throw this out there. Cause lots of times people will say like, Hey, what does that actually mean? If you've ever watched like Orange is the New Black and those kinds of shows, there is some truth to some of those things that go on in those shows where offenders have funds where they can buy products that they need. Um, or family members can do things via e-commerce and have stuff shipped to their loved ones. So there's a lot of actually exciting innovation around that. Um, so again, 20% of the revenue was that, 25, and, and most of the rest is food. Gotcha, cool. And we have another question from John. How often does a lockdown occur? And normally for how long? Steven, you wanna take this one? Yes, yeah, so I do municipal jails, I know. I know Open Chris have come from state facilities, but I've never been in a lockdown. I've heard of one in my district in three and a half years, uh, and it wasn't for very long. Uh, so, no, I've, I've not had any lockdowns. Anoop, do you want to share it all with DRC? Yeah, I mean, uh, in a year and a half, I really haven't seen any lockdowns, and I heard of one, and honestly, it doesn't affect us in any way because we have a separate uh, exit route and uh, it, it doesn't affect airmark workers in any way. So it just, if there's any, it'll be just for the um, inmates, offenders, but it doesn't affect airmark in any way. Yeah, airmark I think, employees, I think, yeah. Right, and I think it's unique, right? Because the jail's built, so kitchens are very separate. So they might lock down housing units, but yeah. we're, we're separate, so. And typically with lockdowns, it ends, it's usually something that's very trivial and not, much to do with actual like danger to security, but more a, a detriment to keeping it secure. So such as some sort of power going down in an area where there's not as much lighting as they need. So they control movement, but it's, uh, in my experience, it's been always situations like that where it's just a matter of circumstance, but not because of something that's actually happening in the facility. Um, so that's, that's kind of the general what happens too with those. Yeah, more in the movies than anything else on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Good to know. Good to know. Cool. Um, we have another question from Jessica. Curious to learn more about Intowork. Is this a specific team with an Aramark involved in that program? Or is there a further opportunity for others to get involved? Yeah, so there's always opportunity for folks to get involved. So how it's structured 
is the development of that program is done within our, our marketing and innovation team at the business unit. So we, uh, Nicole McBall, so feel free to reach out to her. Um, and again, if you have any questions, you can certainly reach out to me afterward, but she has worked to develop that program. It's her baby over the years. Um, when I was in the marketing innovation side, she worked with me and, and again, it was, it was really an important part of what we do. Um, so where there's opportunities to get involved is a lot of our on-site food service directors, GMs, or other folks in our facilities become instructor proctors and teach that curriculum. But then in addition, there's support resources within the region that help talk to clients about it, work with our operations teams to get their programs set up for success, you know, consult on graduation, provide post-release support. Um, so there's a number of ways to get involved with that program. Awesome. Well, and I've heard great things about that. Um, could you give us a quick overview? Uh, again, you mentioned it earlier, but just a quick overview of what the Into Work program is. Sure. So it takes, you know, anywhere, it depends if we're offering it in a state facility where the offenders are there for longer or in a municipal facility where, you know, a jail, a county jail, where they're there for a shortened period of time. So we, we shorten that program or lengthen it depending on how long we have them with us. But we take them through a lot of learning kitchen basics, which we take them through a lot of learning around food handling. Um, they have a workbook. In addition, there's technology actually in jails and prisons and, and offenders have access to tablet technology. And so one of our partners is able to deliver our into work program on their tablet for us, which is pretty cool. So they take all their assessments online. Um, it, it's, pretty, it's pretty neat. So they go through that curriculum. They do a lot of hands-on work in the kitchen. So they apply the things they learn in that kitchen um, it, developing retail style, mo uh, style foods, et cetera, menu items to support either the staff or the retail programs that we have. And then upon release, they're given support services relative to um, applying for scholarships. And then actually Aramark's talent acquisition team has specific resources designed to help those folks then come and work in Aramark facilities. We get them their surf safe certificate. Um, so it's, it's pretty robust and it, and it continues to grow. It's probably one of the single largest areas of, I'll say, when you think about like corporate expenses or business unit expense line item, it's probably one of the single largest investments that we make is into that program. Wow. Awesome. So that's what people talk about sometimes when they talk about the potential impact. Uh, Cause again, of course that, that kind of uh, investment and impact doesn't exist in other lines of business. So that's really cool. Yep. Awesome. Um, another question from John here, um, and then we'll probably have to wrap up. Is there catering in corrections? If so, is that a big piece of the business? Kramer, you want to take this one? So, sorry, we do a lot of last name calling in. <laughs> we use a lot of people in corrections. So, I'll yeah. say, that. Chris, do you want to take this one? <laughs> Absolutely. So and that, that, again, is one of those things that you really do get to work with your client to see what you can provide them. Uh, different places have different scopes in terms of how many staff they have and different kinds of meetings and outside events they do. But yes, we definitely do have the ability to cater them. It is part of that into work program to give them that experience and to help those offenders to get those skills. Uh, so we definitely do that. And then in a lot of facilities, too, we can do sale. We do sales within the inmate population. So especially in larger facilities like state facilities, they do what are called group sales and they get to come up, they come to us and just have a meeting like you would with any other food provider and you come up with some sort of menu or items that they want to sell to the inmate population and then they're coming to us as a vendor, we provide it to them, they turn around and then give it. So again, it just, it builds skills and we, we really do try and give ways that we can help to, again, just give back and really create a difference with them. And we use catering as part of that. We also do, just like you would in a corporate cafe, we do a lot of holiday type special event catering. Steven, I think you have a number of catering events you do, right? I do a lot of catering for judge retirements, promotions, retirements. I mean, we do courthouses, government buildings. So I do have a facilities that do a lot of catering. And then one week that's near and dear to all of our hearts is National Corrections Officer Week is the first week of May. And it's really an exciting time for our business. So every individual account um, is, is tasked with coming up with creative celebrations for their clients during that week to celebrate our clients, staff, and officers. Um, so there's a lot of catering that goes on during that time. Again, special menus, special events, barbecues, whatever it may be. 
Um, but that's, that's certainly a, a time of year that's pretty exciting um, and allows for a lot of creativity. Awesome. Really dynamic business. <laughs> cool. Well, unfortunately, that is all the time we have uh, for today. But I want to thank you all so much for taking the time to listen to our panelists, uh, hear more about this incredible opportunities, uh, and just expressing general interest and, and sitting along with us. Um, real quick, I'm going to share some ways that we can uh, keep in touch. Um, so first, I highly recommend if you're interested at all of any further questions, go ahead and contact us directly at alumni at um, Very responsive and super excited to have further dialogue with anybody on the call. Uh, you can also just go straight ahead and apply on the new career site, which is again, careers.airmark.com. And if it's easier for you all, you can also apply by phone and engage with Ali, our virtual assistant. Uh, all you gotta do is text, text C-O-R-J-O-B-S, Core Jobs, to 63000 on your cell phone and you'll get right in touch. So with that, I wanna say thank you to our panelists. You guys are awesome. I appreciate you taking the time and sharing your experience. Uh, and I hope everybody has a great weekend, a great Memorial Day. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. See y'all. Thank you.